HMP Lindholm, Hadfield Woodhouse, Doncaster, Cat C Prison. How are we doing, kid? Firstly, thanks to all those people that suggested diets for Stephen, being an old boy. He's now on a pretty much natural diet. He's doing a lot better. Most of his allergies, itches, scratches seem to have gone away and I much appreciate that. He, he looks in fine health, not that you'll see it tonight. So, a gang has been busted. Drug smugglers, that's prisoners. And a young lady, healthcare assistant. She was having an intimate relationship with a prisoner. And, boy, did she take shitloads of drugs into prison. Um, he talked about a million pounds, massive conspiracy, people outside, relatives, friends involved in it. Mobile phones, it's got, got caught taking four Ribena bottles of liquid spice into prison. Uh, yeah, big money. Drugs and prisons are big money. We need to look why drug usage has gone up. However, that's never gonna happen, is it? Due to lockdowns, and everything else, more people than ever using drugs in prison and people who've never used drugs, using drugs in prison. Now they've got big sentences, the lads and that lass, the conspirators and that. Really, when you look at the sort of sentences they've got, some of them already serving, one lad was serving life and the like, they're quite steep to what people get on the outside. I'm seeing county lines drug dealers, that's people who's taking drugs from one area, maybe the Midlands, Birmingham area, and maybe going to Yorkshire or somewhere else to sell them drugs, crossing county lines, using kids, children, because they can't be prosecuted, getting them drunk, supplying them with drugs and the like, you name it, county lines drug dealers, getting way less, six, seven, eight year for the main people. They're not harsh enough them. You're trafficking kids, taking kids from their area where they live to another area to sell drugs, you need slamming. However, the prison one, let's get into it. Spice, talks about spice. It's gone dark very quick. Let's go this way, maybe you can still see my bald napper. Talks about spice. Now the shocking thing is with drugs, and it is the, is the worst thing for me is the bullying. See, anyone can buy drugs. I can be in prison, can have no money. I can buy drugs. Can use people on the out, family. You give me some drugs, I get in debt. I have to get a family member then to pay for them. That might involve meeting on the out, uh, sending money in so I can buy canteen and give it you various methods. Somewhere like Lindholm might even involve a family member bringing drugs in. Boy, with drugs going in the door through there. As a prison, let me tell you now, the Nationals, that's the the lads and maybe some lasses now, um, with all the inclusivity and that, uh, train 24 hours a day, 24 seven, all year round to work in prisons, to supervise people, incidents, they work at height, they use pyrotechnics, they have all the gadgets, all the tools, the SAS at a prison service. I know they have many, many trips to Lindholm. I think it's the most visited prison. I remember seeing a chart on a wall, I think it was at the training center where you do your riot training at the incidents at prison. And the, the biggest majority were local because I did my riot training, Donny, and that was Lindholm prison, yeah. So it's got a problem, massive drugs problem. Like I said, he got slammed, but the shocking thing, the thing about spice, yeah, is the damage it does. One lad died. It was made, it was used a guinea pig and it was made to take spice. That the main guy, I think he was called Whittington, was having smuggled in. So imagine that, your young one's in prison, loved one, yeah, so one bullies them, they're made to take spice and they die. It is fucking dangerous stuff. You know, I've seen prisoners, um, well, at worst, basically gouge their own eyes out. I, I can't say 
that's how it is. Gouged his own, own eyes out, took spice, two incidents, believed the devil was in his head behind his eyes and he took and gouged his own eyes out. It's shocking shit, that stuff. Everywhere. It's wrecked everywhere. It's destroyed prisons. Absolutely destroyed prisons. And it's everywhere. There's another lad, was again, later on, made to take it, used as a guinea pig. He lost the use of his legs. So around this case, there's at least two people, one who's gonna be disabled for life, the other who's lost their life. The family's lost their loved ones. Yeah, so that's serious shit. I'm sure that has um, added to the sentences these people have got, and rightly so. This young lady, I believe she got about 10 years. When she comes out on license, which means she won't serve the full sentence. Let's get hold of her and others, because it's happening way too much. Let's get her going around prisons. Let's get her at prison service college telling her story, because people aren't listening. Young lasses are going into prison, they're falling in love, and they're being used to smuggle drugs and everything else. Yeah, it's dead easy. Wherever you have lads and lasses together, yeah, it's gonna happen. People fall in love and then they get used, especially in prison. Let me tell you now, the prison I used to work in, Strange Ways, was in the high security estate. The levels of security in there, the search, entry, exit, were way stricter than most prisons, yeah? We weren't at allowed to take liquids into Strange Ways. Maybe they should do that for all prisons. The problem is, you see, a lot of prisons are that short of staff that the enhanced gate security entry procedures can't be followed out, can't be kept running because there's no one to do it, yeah? So you put something in place and then it lapses. Point and fact, a young lady who I am talking to has a loved one in a local prison who tried to take their own life. Must be traumatic enough to find out from a third party contact someone yourself who got in touch with a prison and then only did the prison then contact this young lady for me it's truly shocking the prison informed the young lady that they have 72 hours when there's an incident like that your loved one tries to take their own life hanging cutting the wrist whatever 72 hours to get in touch with family members that might be the case but you know, sh surely in this day and age, a bit of empathy and understanding, that's not acceptable. And apparently, the prison, I don't know, receptionist, whoever was on the switchboard, is like the old doctor's receptionist, trying to get past them to speak to someone, now impossible. You're phoning up, your son's in prison, tried to take their own life, hang the cells maybe, cut the wrists even, yeah? You want to speak to someone, you've informed this person of your state, your state of mind's not gonna be good and they're saying, yeah, everyone's busy. Can't get anyone to get in touch with you. What about the chaplaincy? Nah, can't get in touch with you. Everyone's busy. I'll try my best to put you through, we'll get back to you. Thank you, bye, beep. And then you get cut off. Prisons are flat on their ass. Nice to see some big sentences being handed out. But it's not gonna stop drugs. Someone will replace the guy, the crew, the team, that young lady who's got prison and them lads who've got time added to their sentences. Always someone to replace them. I'm just going to leave it there, guys. Thanks for your continued support. I'm nearly going on my ass. I don't know whether you can see ladder for the parting shot. Stephen! Thanks for everyone who supports me on Patreon. Everyone who's bought me a brew. Your support for guests, past, present and future. Now, I'm, I'm guessing it's just pitch black. I don't know where he's gone now. Having a black lab with a flashing collar doesn't always work. Stephen! There we go. Thanks for coming. God bless you all. I'll see there.